live from the beautiful Philip S. Rain Memorial Ballroom in beautiful downtown Fresno. It's the quarterly IT All Staff webcast. Now, put your hands together for a guy who's so into technology, he sends a Mother's Day card to Siri, George <laughs> Thanks, Ed. You know, I love this because it's so exciting. I just never know what you're going to say, right? So I, I didn't know you were going to share my personal card story. But anyway, uh, I actually want to put out a question for the audience at home because you folks probably here in D6 already know the answer. Uh, and so hit the Ask George line. Uh, Philip Rain. Who was Philip Rain and what was he known for? So I know all the IT folks are busy on their phones and desktops Googling. So, Ron, if you find first one who, uh, who finds the answer, please let us know. Uh, last time, we had a lot of questions to ask George. I really want to encourage that. Certainly, you've got myself, right? You've got all the division chiefs. A great opportunity to ask questions. You know, we're captive. If we're not able to get to your question on the live show, then certainly Ron will uh, make sure that we get a response to you. So everybody who writes in will get a response. Um, thank you all for tuning in. You know, I always want to start with that because I know we're all busy. But it's an opportunity for all of us to sync up, get on the pa same page. Opportunity for us, I always tell the division chiefs, to share information, right? So we're, we're all marching in the same direction. It's an opportunity for you to engage, and, and we, we do that by these quarterly all staffs, and we try to keep it light and entertaining as well, so folks, uh, folks tune in. Got a great show today in the ballroom, the Philip S. Rain ballroom. I thought it was a mini room, but in the ballroom. Uh, and you know, we're going to start with the Big Bang. I'd like to introduce uh, the local district director, Sherry uh, Bender-Ellard. Can you come on up? Hi, Sherry. How are you doing? Good. I just want to say thank you for inviting me to your meeting, and uh, welcome to you and your team to District 6. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really, you. You're always so hospitable. You know, I didn't know if it's the Valley. You know, I attribute it to yourself as well. So I really appreciate, you know, you always welcome myself and the, certainly the executive team. Always great uh, yeah. with the IT staff, so I appreciate the attention you, you spend with us. Nice. Uh, can you tell us a little, there's so much going on, i got to tell you, on the drive down, uh, we saw a lot of construction yeah, yeah. off 99. It seems like there's a lot going on down here. Yeah, so just so most of you know, mm -hmm. we do have the high-speed rail project that has started here in Fresno County. Mm -hmm. It was the first groundbreaking of that first leg of high-speed rail. And so those structures you're seeing off of 99, um, there's the pergola structure in North Fresno, which crosses the river. And then we also have a structure viaduct that's crossing 99 um, in the south part of Fresno. So that's the very visible construction you see. There's other construction going on that's not as visible. Yeah. But I do know that high-speed rail, the line will cross state highways about 60 times. 60 times. In my district alone. <laughs> Just in D6. Just right? in District 6. So yeah. the rail line, I think, is fairly straight. Yeah. The highways are not as straight. And so there's a lot of crossings. And so there's quite a bit of construction. Um, and we as Caltrans are oversighting that work when it crosses the state highway system, making sure it meets our specifications, our requirements, and we have to issue encroachment permits. So, so that's a big part of what we're doing here in District 6. Um, in addition to that, we do have a relationship with High Speed Rail, mm -hmm. and uh, they have asked us, at least on one occasion, and we're hoping there may be a couple more, to do some actual highway work for right. them. For, for example, not too far from our office, we did a realignment of 99. We actually pushed the freeway about 100 feet to the west. Wow. We did the design. We administered the construction. Um, it's roughly $200 million worth of work that we did for High Speed Rail, all this direct work. And now that freeway is done. Um, we have a new freeway out of it, which is awesome for us. Nice, nice. <laughs> great deal. And uh, they, what happened was you've got the Union Pacific Railroad. We have our old real estate, which was 99, which now will become the high-speed rail alignment. And then adjacent to that is the freeway. So we recompleted two interchanges as a result of that project and did about 200, uh, two miles of, of freeway realignment. So Fantastic. Yes, and it's, it's kind of their gold star. They told us oh, that. Oh, they said, this is our gold star. It's the only thing that's finished. Yeah. We can say, hey, this is you know something yeah. we've accomplished uh, with Caltrans as high-speed rail. It's very impressive. i got to tell you, yeah. just coming to 99 and seeing the size of the structure, yeah. it's, it's, 
it's amazing, right, yeah. what we can achieve when we work together. Yep. I understand the high-speed rail hasn't been without some personal sacrifice for you, Sherry. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't even know if my group knows this story. And I was thinking about it yesterday. And so June 30th, 2016, okay. so wow. it's coming up on three years, we were at a point in that project where we were getting ready to either issue the contract to the CMGC contractor, which is a different uh, delivery method than your traditional design bid build. We get the contractor on board early. Mm -hmm. We come to agreement on price. Well, that price was over the amount of money we had as an allocation from high-speed rail, so we needed them to agree to go to their board and get extra money. Well, just as difficult as it is for Caltrans to get extra money as it oh. is for high-speed rail. So they have a different board. They don't go to the Transportation Commission like we do. Um, and so they were struggling with whether they wanted to go ask for that money or make some other changes to the project. Well, the, the point that it was June 30th, on July 1st, there were some new laws that went into effect that affect the trucking industry. Okay. So if we didn't pull the trigger by June 30th, all our bids were out the oh, window. We well, kind of had to start over on estimates, rework, huh? blah, blah, blah. And got so it, here we it. are. We had to issue that work order, get going yeah. by the end of that yeah. day at 5 o'clock. Yeah. 2 p.m. on that afternoon, I was stressed. And I was walking down the hallway, and I tripped and fell. No. Landed on my foot, oh. and I broke my foot. So no. some of you remember me in a boot. Yeah. <laughs> so I did. I fractured okay. my foot, and I actually worked for two more hours. Four o'clock, safety said, do you want to go get your foot looked at? I'm like, I've got to decide. Yeah. Are we going to go to construction? Oh, yeah, yeah. And so finally at 4 o'clock, I caved and drove to the doctor and uh, was talking to high-speed rail Diana Gomez at that po mm. point in time. And she said, yes, we're going to go mm. forward. I said, send me a letter. I need it before 5. Yeah, <laughs> yeah amazing, amazing stuff. So, yeah, so that was kind of my sacrifice <laughs> in getting that project out to construction. Well, so. I vividly remember seeing you with a boot right. Right, one of the executive board right. meetings probably in Oakland. And I, yes. we talked about what had happened. I, Yep. I think it's a great story. It probably makes uh, High Speed Rail very memorable for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have a, a really good relationship, yeah. but it doesn't come without, you know, some stress and sure. constraints as well because we are two different agencies trying mm -hmm. to accomplish, you know, two different missions, if you sure. will. Sure, so. and any big project, and certainly the size yep. of that project, there's mm -hmm. going to be uh, you know, some right. endeavors that are going to be right. stressful. So. But that's not the only thing that's going on yeah. right, here in Fresno. Uh, D6 overall, I guess? Yeah. Actually, let me, I don't know your staff statewide, how oh. familiar they are with District 6. Yep. So maybe I'll give a little bit of, a, of kind of who we are and what, what the Valley's about. Um, so District 6 mm -hmm. spans Kern County yep. down Southern California, Bakersfield was mentioned earlier, all the way up through Madera County, yep. just, just north of us in Fresno. And so there's a five-county area that encompasses District 6. Yep. And we are literally the center of the state. Right, we mm -hmm. we are technically the geographic center really? of the state. You're so the you, heart of California. Yeah. So if you figure out the ge you know ge geography yeah. and and North Fork, I think is technically oh, the geographic yeah. center of California, which yeah. is within District Six, not okay. very far from Fresno. So so we pride ourselves in being that center of the state, yeah. right? And and we're not very far from things. Mm -hmm. We have the mountains, you know, to our east. 45 minutes an hour you want to go skiing, and you, two and a half hours if you want to go to the beach. You know, you can pretty much get to anywhere in the state within a, a fairly reasonable drive. And so, so we have that going for us. We have that diverse geography. Right. We also have deserts in the south end of our district, okay. right, in Kern County. Um, and then we have three national parks, access wow. to three national parks, right, Yosemite, um, cool. Kings Canyon, and Sequoia National Parks wow. all, can all be accessed from District 6. Um, and on top of that, we've talked a little bit about the agriculture, right, that's, that we have in the valley. So that's our main um, economic base, if you will, is the agriculture. We primarily grow fruits, stone fruits, um, uh, grapes, raisins. So 95% uh, of the raisins come from Fresno County, believe it or not, that are consumed. Really? Yes. Amazing. Uh -huh. Nuts, um, pistachios, almonds, walnuts, I'd say 90% of the nation's, you know, consumption comes from the valley for a lot of those types of fruits and uh, nuts. Yeah, certainly we saw a lot of trucks, you know, carrying a lot of produce. Right, and so goods right. movement is extremely important to us, yeah. particularly for the 99 corridor mm -hmm. and I-5 corridor, um, because we got to get the farm to market, and so mm -hmm. that's, yes, we have a lot of truck traffic. 30% <laughs> on 99. Oh, I mean, really? Yeah. 
Thirty percent of the traffic is truck traffic on 99. That's amazing. I, yeah. I didn't realize the stats were that high. Yes. And, and you mentioned I-5, but I-5 seems like it's a little further away than 99. Yeah, <laughs> right. And I always joke about that, that we don't drive I-5, right. right? Because if you're going from the Bay Area to L.A. or L.A. to the Bay Area, mm -hmm. you're driving I-5. But the residents of the San Joaquin Valley really don't spend as much time on I-5 unless you're in the southern part of the valley where it connects to 99 mm -hmm. and I-5. You'll, they, they take I-5 north. But for us here in Fresno, it's 40-something miles to go from 99 all the way out to I-5 to the west side. And so we don't drive it a lot. We right. cross over it to get to the, to the coast. <laughs> but we, the we're not on I-5 a lot. Yeah, yeah, so. it makes sense. You know, I didn't realize that. I, mean, I was born and raised in Sacramento. And right. I always think I-5 because right. I'm going to SoCal. And when I come to 99, come to Fresno, I guess it is 99. Right. So that makes sense. But if you're going through, you don't, you go yeah, I-5. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're right. You know, we talked about growing a lot of uh, produce here right. in the Valley. But mm -hmm. I got to tell you, the other thing I've seen, you know, up at headquarters is a lot of leadership, right, coming um, from your organization. You yes. know, there's, you know, Johnny and others are, have been up in, in Sacramento, the SB1 coordinator. Yeah, my current, my, yes, my current loan to headquarters yes, is yes, the SB1 yes. manager. Yes. So it sounds like in addition to produce, you're growing a lot of leadership talent yes, here too. Yes, we are. We, not just managers, I mean even senior yeah. level and above. We get a lot of people coming to us asking for our assistance, mm -hmm. um, you know, provide leadership statewide. Mm -hmm. I know we just did a Lean Six Sigma project with my permits mm -hmm. engineer. Oh. Um, and he's a senior level, right? And then I have manager Nabila Hanif up there right. now. So, yeah. So we, you know, we we try and do our best. Yes. Well, thank you for yeah. that. Yeah. And that then I I do know that we've lent a lot of staff to High Speed yeah. Rail over the years as okay. well. While they've tried to hire up their own staff, okay. we had a lot of people go on loan for them as well. So oh. so yeah, we've done a lot as far as leadership development here. Well, thank you for being the kind of the core of California and the core of leadership. Um, one last question since you mentioned high speed rail again. Okay. I heard something about uh, this being core or foundational, maybe this stretch. Can you yeah, help me understand I, that? It was interesting to me because there's a lot of criticism about high speed rail, um, not just the management of it, yeah. but the fact that they started in more a rural part of the state, uh -huh. right? Not, not the urban core. And it wasn't until Governor Brown came to Fresno mm -hmm. to to launch the groundbreaking for that first segment, and we're talking billion-dollar construction mm -hmm. projects, mm -hmm. right? These there's three construction projects that are already awarded, all are a billion plus. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge impact to our economy, mm -hmm. which is was great. But when Governor Brown came here and he started talking about his vision, and his vision that came from back in the days of the 60s and 70s when they were building BART. Oh, wow. So he, he talked about how the Transbay Tunnel that goes from mm -hmm. Oakland to San Francisco was built initially with state dollars. Okay. The state funded that backbone or core of that system. And then once people saw it, they said, oh, we want to be a part of this. We want to be part of our, we want to take it to our county. And so oh. they all started coming up with money Fantastic. and able to expand the system. And it was kind of that aha moment for me mm -hmm. when I heard him talk about the backbone and the mm -hmm. core of the high-speed rail system being through the Central Valley, mm -hmm. getting that built with state dollars and federal dollars, and then expanding it beyond oh, that and branching out into the to Southern right. and Northern California. So, so I think that was his vision mm -hmm. and... and Hopefully it'll come to fruition someday. Yeah, wonderful. Great point. You know, so yeah. we read about HSR all the time right. in, in the newspapers and so forth, and sometimes it's not always positive. So right. it's really nice to hear kind of the positive aspects of right. it and, and how foundational it is for us. Yeah, great. Well, thank you so much. I really thank you appreciate for having it. me. Yes, thank you. Thank you all. All right, that's a tough act to follow. I, I got to tell you, we, we've learned a lot about certainly D6 as an organization. I know folks in the audience, right, and the home viewership want to know a little bit more about uh, D6 IT Shop. So I'd like to introduce uh, Daniel Peck, our local IT manager. Daniel needs you to hold these cards for him. So okay. Can read them. <laughs> oh, hi, Daniel. How are you doing? Wow, I, I love the prop. Oh, very good. Josh, should I hold it this way? Hello, George. George. <laughs> Next card? Next I'm just going to throw them like that with that a little flare. Welcome to. <laughs> this is the old CMS sign. 
Fresno IT. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's my slide. Yeah. No, I, I, I appreciate it. You, 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 you got that whole thing? That was high tech. Well, certainly you've, well, you know, I love tech that works. Yes, me right? too. And that, that's a great standby. You don't need electricity. You don't, exactly. You just need great staff to uh, prepare it and get it up here. Well, what me. great artisans. I'm going to take those home. Well, please know? do. So I, I kind of like the first thing that we sent you home with, right? I know. You know, that's a funny story. We, you still have that? I do. And I, I, um, I give my family a hard time with that. You were so generous. The first time I came uh, to D6, there's a great poster in the lobby, right, that has my picture and it said, Welcome, George Akiyama. And, I, and uh, although I didn't show it here because I'm kind of shy, you know, I was really happy and excited to receive that poster. And I went home and I give my family a hard time about that every time. You know, when they're down on me, when I didn't mow the lawn, you know, I go whip out that poster and I just walk <laughs> around. <laughs> and they're like, we've seen that poster a thousand times, Dad, put it away. Somebody you know? appreciates me, right? I know, exactly. <laughs> See, I am somebody. So, so I, I do have it. It's in my, like, my computer room and I do put it to use, especially with my 15-year-old. <laughs> so it needs a reminder, you know, sometimes that, that Dad can contribute value. So thank you for that. Well, a 15-year-old, he knows it all. I know, you know, I've gone from You coach should have to him a to NASA while he's <laughs> over. Yeah, I've no I I know less and less and he knows more and more and I I feel like I've gone from coach to spectator. Well Wayne Tyson's turns so. training. Oh gosh. It all, goes away. <laughs> all right, I'll get a second job then so I can be really like focused on that and not worry about, you know, him uh him going away and, and, and really kind of being himself, taking his own shape and leaving me in the in the dark. All right, sad moment. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so tell me what you know. What's going on here in uh, D six IT? I know you got a lot going on. Well, uh, like, like everywhere, everybody's working on the. Um, um, oh, I just took my. <laughs> so I'm doing. I'm I need to get another break. <laughs> <Yeah, I'm> <laughs> Um, you know, we talked earlier about the Windows 10 stuff you're working oh, on. Oh, yeah. Now, let me yeah. go into that a little bit. Okay. It's, uh, it's a statewide initiative because of the yeah. sunsetting of the support yeah. from Microsoft on the Windows 7. And we have an aggressive schedule that um, uh, our staff is really working yeah. on to achieve. They're working on weekends to not to interrupt the flow of the normal business processes. Wow. And uh, we have an ultimate goal to have everything done by October. Yeah. But I think we're on track maybe to have it done a little bit sooner, hopefully. We're hoping. Wow, wow, you heard it here first. <laughs> so, um, but uh, uh, we have it set up to where they're uh, imaging multiple computers wow. at the same time, get them done. That's the new computers. And then we're also targeting uh, the older computers that have Windows 7 but have the licensing for Windows 10, so we stay in compliance across the board. Wonderful, wonderful. And, uh, you know, I love the performance-driven aspect of that, you know. Your folks are working kind of uh, off the typical shift, working overtime to make sure we don't have the impact to the program areas. Uh, that's a really nice way to go. Well, talented bunch of guys. Yeah, yeah. Guys, excuse me, talented bunch of folks. people. Thank yes. you. Guys, guys in the guys. generic term. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> totally get it. So. There, there's some other interesting things. You know, I mean, over the years I've seen this whole, you've got a whole employee engagement program that's happening Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. A, a couple of years ago, as uh, uh, we chartered, what we call IST. Some people call it iced tea. Oh, I like uh, that. All right. Uh, I like it IST because it's easier for me to remember. I don't drink tea. But either way, it's, it stands for yeah. IT Solutions Team. And it's where the uh, staff have a voice on yeah. bringing issues forward, and we work mm -hmm. together as a team to resolve those issues mm -hmm. and um, get everybody's input. And, of course, I told them we, we take any input as far yeah. as issues, but also provide uh, proposed solutions. Oh, wonderful. And short of firing management, you can't do that. Our <laughs> personnel issues. Yeah. So, but uh, get to Sherry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, everything that we do is with the customer in mind. Yep. It's all about the customer experience, and so we s try to strive, uh, even with the solutions team, because we're targeting internal things to yeah. IT for the morale yep. uh, and such for the staff. And uh, if you have a happy worker, you have a productive worker. Yes. I, I think we all are more productive when we're happier. And i got to tell you, uh, these are some very candid conversations. And uh, I, it took a lot of courage for you to have Mike and I, you know, attend some of those sessions. I, you know, I have not seen that replicated in any other district where you guys just, you know, just call it, right? You get together as a team and you put the issues on the table. Uh, it's very transparent and very accountable. 
So, you know, I appreciate that. And I appreciate that it seems like over the years you guys were able to take on some really big issues and resolve them and keep going forward. So, Of course, McAfee is one of those big issues. That oh, yeah, on. yeah, yeah. And that was an enterprise thing that uh, yep. we initially took on. We uh, leveraged the staff here. Mm -hmm. And they took it, made it their own, went forward, and uh, made it a great thing. There's a cost savings to the state and the yeah. easeability of managing the yep. uh, encryption and the uh, endpoint security. Yeah, that's that's amazing because it was enterprise wide, right? And so it wasn't just for D six McAfee. I mean, really, that was for this. That was a statewide rollout. And I know you folks do a lot of great work, even on even on the app dev side. Absolutely, we have our automation integration unit, yep. and of course, just to point out, John Ramirez. He was just promoted to be the manager right. over that unit, and uh, they've done some great things. And the primary objective is for IT to be a one stop shop for uh, our clients, Sherry. <laughs> uh, for their IT needs yeah. and uh, providing the tools that the uh, clients may need in the stakeholders to perform their mm -hmm. respective functions. And where it may not be available on the enterprise-wide level, uh, we have the ability to get it to them in a relatively uh, quick and efficient way. Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't sell yourself short because I, I remember there's a couple of instances where headquarters reached uh, down to D6 AppDev because we had some application issues we couldn't figure out, and, and you guys uh, got that resolved, and those were enterprise rollouts. So, you know, it's not just D6. Again, that's part of the one IT culture. Yes. Or it doesn't matter where you're at. You know, the headquarters doesn't have uh, the market on innovation or solutions, and so I love reaching out to the districts and, and getting help. And really, I bet you guys love solving the bigger issues, right, that, that are, you know, beyond a single district or We like the region. challenges. Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. So it's great. Uh, and of course, I, I would leverage my staff against anybody in the state. Oh. I mean, that's how great we are. Right, that's guys? Awesome. Do I hear it? Come on. Oh, come on. Right. Oh. Come on. <laughs> I know. And I, I know you really take care of your staff. I, I got to tell you, um, Daniel's always the first in with the training plans, you know, and uh, he always, you always do a great job of asking for even more dollars. You know, it seems like every year, and we're getting around that time where we're developing our annual training plans. Luck's going to talk a little bit more about that. But you're always first on the beach, to use the D-Day kind of analogy, right? You're always making sure that your folks have the training, have the resources, you know, uh, to do their job. So I appreciate that because you would think it'd be common. It's not, right? It's, it's very rare. So, Absolutely. Great job. Thank you. You know, in terms of teamwork, I understand you guys also put together a short video. Absolutely. Again, uh, leveraging the talent of the staff here in Fresno IT. What? Let's Should we take a look? Let's take a look. All right. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Fresno IT managers, Caltrans is in trouble. The fate of California is at stake. Will you help us, Fresno IT? But this isn't a one division job. We need all of your help. Wow, that was a fantastic video. I, you know, and the other thing is, normally Ed puts those together when he visits the districts, but you guys elected to do that video all yourself. Absolutely. 
because we have the talent. And of course, I want to point out one. Uh, Berto, there you are. Stand up Stand for a up, second. Bro. Stand up. <laughs> Did you do that real? And of course, he had the help and the support of uh, uh, other members of IT, but I wanted to point him out specifically. Uh, he also okay. did our video from The Day in the Life of Fred. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That so, was a hilarious video. I thought I saw a couch in that video. Is there? Yeah, that's where he came in and went to sleep on my couch while I was working. <laughs> <laughs> so I made up for it by doing this video. Absolutely. And he stayed awake the whole time. Well, fantastic. <laughs> hey, I, I gotta, I'm got noticing something a little amiss with the... Well, well let me tell you. We're watching your waistline. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm at home. So, <laughs> why'd you have to? Why is this fifteen bucks though? If I'm <laughs> well, I, I gotta get what I can. All right, all right. We'll put that to the training dollars. That, that's it. That's it. Well, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate the review of uh, my pleasure. Of thank you, George. IT. Keep up the great work. Thank you, George. All right. I'm tempted to snack on this the whole time. <laughs> all right. Now we come to a, a part of the agenda where I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the stuff that's, that's going on kind of at the CIO level, and then you also hear from the division chiefs. But again, I'm going to plug Ask George, so if you have any questions, uh, you know, send them in. Ron, I see your head shaking, so it seems like we've gotten some questions. Right. I also, did we get an answer to the Philip Rain question? Did. Oh, do we? All right, let's take that right now. We did an order of answers. All right, all right, fantastic. Oh, nice. Said product engineering manager and senior project engineer from 2008 to 2017 in RF micro devices. Is that a correct? Oh, you know, I don't know. I'm trying to find out, but so much. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'd have the answer, but all right, all right. Micro devices, very good. The next staff to answer is Frank Shelley at the district. Oh, office. Frank, okay. He's a chief of the division. Of, I'm sorry. Thank you. We got to get Mike. We got to get Ron mic'd up here. All right, testing. All right. The next one came from Frank Shelley at the uh, the chief. He says, "Is he the chief of division of highways from '79 to '81?" Oh, that's it. I, I'm looking to share in the, in the background, and that's it. So, nice job, uh, Roger, for getting there quick. And Frank, Frank, right? In yeah. D1. Wow. All right. Very impressive. Good well, job, Frank. Good job, Frank. Now, uh, Ron will be happy to compensate you with a large gift in some way. So, uh, so please see Ron. I, I think he's got an engine. I know you're a Volkswagen guy, so it's probably a VR6. <laughs> Thank you, George. Right. We'll, send him some popcorn. we'll send him some popcorn. Very good. Yeah, I've got half a bag left. We can send that up to Frank. All right, but um, for my piece, you know, some stuff I want to talk about, we probably don't get to engage on this conversation very much. But I want to talk a little bit about, about uh, mission and vision and the division chiefs are going to talk about values. And you're going to have probably more discussion on this. Uh, soups and managers are, are starting to get a new uh, newsletter in, in which uh, this is one of the topics for our June edition. And so, you know, we really want to talk about mission, vision, and how we all align with what that means uh, here at Caltrans. And, you know, I don't want to necessarily read the, the mission statement uh, word for word, but I want to call out some key words in my mind. And, and from my perspective, you know, what that means, how do we align, how does IT fit in that mission statement? So you see words like safe. So for, um, for safe, you know, I always think about call, you know, because I think about security, you know, and the cybersecurity and calls efforts to try to keep us uh, safe from all the, the bad guys and gals out there. The other word I, I key up on is uh, sustainable. You know, when I think about sustainable, in IMD, we created that life cycle practice where now we have some idea of how long those assets should last. You know, we did a BCP two years ago. We rolled out $12 million worth of equipment, which also helped the sustainability of the compute environment. Uh, the next word I think about is integration. And when I think about integration, I think about Luxu. Because when we run these big enterprise projects, you know, oftentimes we have to bring in a lot of different teams. You know, almost all the teams in IT have to get together, you know, app dev, infrastructure, security, and of course the PMOs running those efforts. In addition to the, all, the IT type, all the IT teams, we also have the program areas, right? Because we don't exist if it weren't for them. So we've got a lot of integration with the program areas, and depending on the size of the project, we may bring a vendor in. And so that vendor is also part of that uh, integration. And the last, the, other, the last word that's really key to me is efficiency. You know, I mean, uh, that's, we want to do things 
right, as efficiently as possible. And when I see that word, I think about quick maps, you know, on the application side. Because when I think about, you know, it's a service that we offer that helps, right, our, the traveling public understand, uh, you know, kind of where to go, how to get there. I got to tell you, in some ways, I, I like it better than, you know, Waze or, or Google Maps, et cetera. So I see all the divisions in our mission statement, and I, I think we're going to have some more discussions, certainly, at the, at the unit level around, you know, how individually our jobs fit into our mission statement. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is our vision statement. And again, for me, there's, there's key terms in this vision statement, but rather than talk about it at kind of the division level, let's bring it down to the, the district level, right? Let's bring it down to D6, because we just heard a great overview from Daniel around what D6 is up to. So some of the key words for me, performance driven, right? Daniel opened up his discussion with what's he's doing with that Windows 10 migration. You know, I mean, certainly working uh, overtime, working off shift, if you will, to make sure that the program areas aren't impacted. You know, to me, that's performance driven. That says we're going to get this thing done, right, no matter what it takes, uh, which I appreciate. Um, you know, transparency and accountability. You know, we get to the, you know, the team that meets together that, that talks and takes on issues. And I've seen that evolve over time. That's that's discussion where I got to tell you, I was really happy about the candor. I was really happy that, you know, certainly Mike and I were invited to see some of those discussions and see how that played out. I can't think of anything that's more transparent and accountable than that activity. Um, you know, also it's an organization that values its people, right, its resources. Uh, so Daniel's uh, first went in with the training plans, right? So he says it's important to, to him as an organization. So he's making the investment, right? He wants to make sure that uh, he's getting his fair share, whether it's for training or the popcorn bag that he, he hit me for 20 bucks on. And next time I talk about it, it'll be 25. Um, and lastly, uh, you know, it's meeting all these things through, um, through leadership, through innovation, and through teamwork. So from the leadership perspective here, you know, it's, it's having those tough discussions with everybody in the room. It's innovation. It's McAfee started here. Right? I mean, this is where that thing got uh, rolled out statewide. And teamwork, you saw the video. I mean, D6 IT put that together themselves, right? They all worked together. And that video is really about teamwork. So, so there you have it, whether you're talking about the mission statement, right? Whether you're talking about the vision statement, you know, I hope that all of you can see, you know, kind of your role and, and what makes uh, Caltrans so successful and so important. Look for further discussions. Again, you know, I mean, soups and managers are going to start to get some information around, uh, you know, how you might have that discussion. So, uh, so I hope that those are very lively. The second thing I want to talk about is leadership changes. So what does that mean? Is, am I going to make an announcement here about Mike? No. <laughs> no, there's some of the leadership changes I want to talk about, at the, certainly at the CalSTA level. And CALS is the agency organization that provides oversight over Caltrans, CHP, DMV, Office of Traffic Safety, CTC, BOPC, right? The kind of list goes on. Uh, but they're the parent organization over Caltrans. You may have seen some of the information around the Secretary of Transportation leaving. Brian Annis recently left to go to high-speed rail. Uh, Under Secretary Christine Inouye also left uh, to go to high speed rail. And then uh, you probably closer to home, you saw the email around Lori Berman leaving, right? Uh, she's going to go into retirement. Lori's a pretty active person. I don't, know if, I don't know if Lori will ever actually retire. But certainly there's been some transition in some uh, high level roles, right? Uh, good news is, you know, there's still a lot of stability here, you know, kind of at this level. Uh, so I don't see anything changing, you know, on a on a day-to-day -day business for most of us. I think we need just to keep focused and engaged in our projects and our activities. Um, at the same time, I think you'll probably see, you know, I, I know myself and the division chiefs may have a little more engagement, right, with the new administration coming. Quite frankly, we had a very strong reputation with the prior administration. Undersecretary, in a way, would often... Uh, provide a kind remark at the executive board meetings about IT. So all the district directors attended, 
right? All the deputies attended, the director, chief deputy, uh, Federal Highway Administration is in the room, and Christine always found a way to compliment IT on some of the some of the efforts that we have and the progress that we're making. That doesn't happen without the work that we all do, right? Now we got a new crew. That means uh, you know we got to get out front again, and uh, we got to make sure we get some strong wins so we can enjoy right kind of the fruits of that credibility with them. So when it's a budget change proposal time when we're trying to get some more resources, right? You know, if we've got a proven track record, it'll be easier for us to get additional resources to get our jobs done. So, long story short, lots of changes. I think day-to-day, -day, right, the, our work shouldn't change. But, you know, again, it's an opportunity for us to show everything that we can do and, you know, prove how talented uh, Caltrans IT is. The last thing is administrative responsibilities. Uh, and you'll hear a little bit more about this from, from Luck again. Certainly, you know, what does administrative responsibility mean? Well, to me, you know, it's, it's, that, it's the parts of the work which are, quite frankly, is equally as important as our technical work. But, you know, it's those annual performance evaluations for the managers. You know, uh, last year we had, I'm not going to steal Luck's Thunder, we had a very high mark on those annual performance evaluations. You know, certainly cybersecurity training, you know, all of those things are part of our administrative responsibilities. But, you know, at the staff level too, right, there's all things that we have to do, whether it's, um, you know, excess leave plan, which I had to submit to, right, so, uh, so everybody had to do that. Or, you know, your timesheets or taking the, the mandatory training, right, whether it's safety or cybersecurity, we all have these responsibilities. You know, and a lot of times I think we don't place enough emphasis on that. But the new administration is very keen uh, on these activities, and so under Lux leadership, you're going to see you know more information around you know either annual performance evaluations are due or training information, or you've probably seen a lot on the the leave excess leave uh, reports and plans that we have to put in. So those are the three things you know I I want to chat about. Ron, do we have any questions now, or, just do, or there will be questions at the end? No, George, you can uh, take the question that's directed at you. Oh, um, thanks, Ron. Well, I appreciate that. Well, you're up there. Um, so it says, George, I understand the IT executives are identifying business initiatives for fiscal year uh, 1920. How does IT staff learn about what they are? Great question. So every year, every year we do a business plan. So, you know, this year, I guess the backdrop of some of the uh, leadership changes, we probably won't go as aggressive, right? I mean, um, on the IT enterprise objectives. The DCs and I are meeting on Friday, and in that Friday meeting, we're going to pare down the list of uh, proposed ideas. And what will happen is once we finalize that list, you know, division chiefs will share with their leadership teams, and leadership teams will um, kind of share with their staff, and that way you'll know, you know some of the key initiatives coming into this year. Thank you, George. Thank you. I appreciate that, Ron. And next, I think we've got Carl Copper. I'm going to introduce him as the funniest guy in information security. <laughs> Uh, by the way, for the viewers at home, that's an inside joke, actually, because I was uh, telling uh, walk into a bar jokes before we went live, and they were terrible. Um, so uh, George was talking about mission and vision for the department. I want to spend just a, a few seconds here talking about uh, one of the values, the core values at Caltrans around integrity. So in, it's a natural fit for cybersecurity for me to be up talking about uh, uh, integrity, because in cybersecurity we have the, the uh, confidentiality, availability, and integrity of systems. And it's pretty intuitively obvious to us in technology, if you don't have a system with integrity, you don't really have a system, right? If the, if the integrity breaks of the system. Well, that kind of carries over, it maps over pretty, pretty well to us, right? In our day-to-day -day, uh, work, in our lives. If you have integrity, that, in, that integrity can translate into your team's integrity and your team's integrity can translate into Caltrans integrity. So it's a, it's a core value for the department and there's, there's a great benefit for focusing on making sure we all understand what it means to have integrity. And, it, and for me personally, I'll just say, it, can, it typically can mean in a professional setting, you do uh, what's right over what's easy. So, you know, if that, if that rail line has to cross the freeway 60 times, we're going to make that rail line straight. There's some integrity there. 
Uh, I'm going to talk about four things today for the cybersecurity. We have a, a vast amount of uh, projects and efforts that, we, that we're working on. It feels vast to me. Uh, for our funding, you've heard me talk about some in the past. I'm going to talk about four things today. First off, our local admin rights pilot. Uh, we are using a no-code, uh, low-code, no-code solution with Simply, Simply Gov. And it's, you've heard us in the past few meetings talk about the bimodal program that uh, we spun up in, in Caltrans IT. And the first product that's coming out of that is now out. It's in pilot. You've probably seen it. We're starting to use it. And it's basically just an electronic document routing system so that we can capture and monitor and understand who has local admin rights to their desktop PC. Um, and I know Saeed and Mike will talk a little bit more about it as well. Uh, application roadmap or app roadmap update. Because we're IT, uh, I, can, I can shorten that to app, right? App roadmap, I have to say application. Uh, the app roadmap is a, an effort to, speaking of integrity, look across the portfolio of systems at Caltrans and ask questions around redundancies, waste, and inefficiencies. So if we have systems where we have 10 systems that do the same thing or Caltrans 12 districts, 12 systems that do the same thing, maybe we can be more efficient, bring more efficiency to government and uh, narrow that down to a single system. So we are in the final stages of awarding the contract. Uh, thanks to everybody on the team who helped evaluate it from all the divisions, evaluate the, the different responses to the uh, RFP. We will soon have somebody on board helping us to work on this problem. Should be about a year long study and we hope to come out the other end of it with some things that will be easy to do, low hanging fruit, and some things will be, of course, difficult to do. And uh, that's why we're calling it a roadmap. Some things may take months, if not years, to fix. The, you've heard me talk about our uh, new um, pilot program to report on blocked adult websites. So uh, speaking of integrity at work, um, we rolled out the pilot. We rolled out the reporting. And one of the key findings that we've found from this is there needs to be a, an automated way to produce the detailed summary report. Uh, virtually everyone asked, uh, you know, when they saw a name on, on the report for their area in, on the program side at Caltrans for that detailed information. So we just need to come out of the gate when we do the reporting with the detailed report. And so we've worked to automate that and we'll roll that out as part of the next uh, phase of this to roll it into production. We're also working on some communication flyer information that we hope all managers and supervisors can come to their staff prior to this turning into punitive. And I always say this isn't about the you know, ethical side of it. It's more about the, those types of websites are associated with um, malware and malicious activity. Um, so this flyer will help managers talk to their staff about uh, increased risk for Caltrans. And finally, quickly, the Caltrans uh, uh, cybersecurity audit, which is done by the California Department of Technology and is mandated. We have just finished it and completed it. The findings have been reviewed by the infrastructure management division folks in Mike's area, and we don't have any objections to the findings. Nothing really um, that was a big surprise in those findings. Things that we'll need to work on in the coming months and, and we're you know, going to have to focus uh, as a team uh, again, the theme of one IT across all of IT to, to close out those findings. So that's what I got for you today. And with that, I'd like to introduce Luxu from PBMD. So PBMD, for those who don't know, stands for Project and Business Management Division. Good morning, everyone. Happy to be here to give you guys an update. So in addition to integrity, another one of Caltrans' core value is commitment. We're all committed to performing our administrative responsibilities that George talked about earlier. We're also all committed to delivering quality services through excellent employee performance, leadership, continuous process improvement, and continuous training and development. Speaking of training and development, I know a lot of you have expressed interest in training. So I want to take a moment to remind you guys of eCampus, formerly known as lynda.com. Ecampus offers a variety of online training that's available on demand. So take 15 minutes out of your day. Go check it out. How many of you actually signed on and checked out Ecampus? What are your thoughts on those courses? Did it meet your needs? 
Daniel? <laughs> For the most part, yes. And of course, the best part about it is the convenience to do it when you have the time. So eCampus, thank you, Daniel, is just one of the options, right? If you guys have checked out eCampus, it doesn't meet your needs. There are alternatives. Meet with your supervisors. Develop a training plan. Submit it to your managers. Once your managers approve, submit the training plan to IT admin. We're going to process it for you. I want to clarify a myth a little bit in terms of training because and not many of you, although you expressed you wanted training, took advantage of the available training funds, right? You guys are our greatest asset. We definitely want to invest in you, right? So we're not allocating a specific dollar per individual staff. Training funds is allocated based on the approved training plan, right? So there's more of an incentive to work with your supervisors or manager, develop those training plans, and submit it to us timely. You guys heard it from George already. Daniel was the first person to raise his hand and say, hey, give me some money. So thank you for your commitment for the continuous training and development of your team. And I don't know if you guys kind of heard this is kind of challenge. Daniel was first in line. Will you guys be the first in line out there in the districts to raise your hand and ask for some training dollars to train your staff, right? And staff, this is really an opportunity for you guys. You guys want it? Schedule that appointment. Talk to your managers and soup and work on that plan, right? The sooner you submit, the sooner you can leverage available training funds. Now, the training plan is a great input to the annual performance review. The annual performance review is really one of our core administrative responsibilities. I want you guys to take a guess. In 2017, Caltrans as a whole, 20,000 employees, right? What was our compliance rate for completion of the annual performance review? Mike? 17.6%. You're so precise. Thank you. But bad data. <laughs> <laughs> the compliance rate in 2017 for Caltrans as a whole, less than 15%. In 2018, because of your commitment and diligence, we reach 100%. IT alone. Not Caltrans, but IT was the only program that was able to hit the mark at 100% compliance for completing the annual performance review. And studies have shown that when employees receive feedback, they feel more value, they feel more appreciated. So it's very important, Manager and Soup, that we meet with our employees and provide timely feedback. So this year around, we're targeting to have everyone complete their annual performance review by August 15th. We'll be sure to send out a reminder to everybody so we're asking for the same commitment again to timely submit your annual performance review. And as always, if you guys have any questions, comments, or need help, feel free to reach out to the admin team. We'll be here to help you. And lastly, I want to give you guys an update in terms of our procurement. Now, I've been at Caltrans for a year now, and I get a lot of questions, comments, and feedback in terms of how we can improve our procurement practices. And I continue to welcome those feedback. I just want to take a moment to give a shout out to the IT acquisition and certification team. They have worked hard, long hours to process all the procurement documents to make sure that we're able to acquire the goods and services that we need to be successful. As of May 31st, IT acquisitions processed 297 procurement documents valuing over $50 million. And the fiscal year hasn't ended yet. There's still a lot of procurement documents that we still need to process. improvements that I want to at least acknowledge that they have implemented to improve our um, collaboration, also improve the um, customer service delivery. We started releasing the IT acquisition and certification advisory notices to timely uh, communicate out any process changes. Additionally, we also set up a monthly Ask Acquisitions conference line. This is our partnership with the district representative. So that way we can share information, share process change information, address issues, challenges, and also partner up and collaborate so that we can continue to make strides in terms of process improvements. That's the latest from the Project and Business Management Division. Ron, do you have any questions? Yes, I do, Luck. Um, one came from uh, headquarters. I have heard that there will be an online APR form available in July. Can you tell me a little bit more about it? Yeah, thank you for that question. So we are partnering with um, Department, Department, Division of HR, right? In Staff Central, there's a function for automated um, annual performance review. It's a web form. 
uh, is strictly for rank and file where the managers and soups can log on to Staff Central and fill out that template. Um, we don't have specific information in terms of the policy surrounding that yet. That's still a work in process. So managers and supervisors, stay tuned for additional information. But from what we can see, the good thing with this web form is at least you can go on, key the information in, retain it, store it, and then go back to reference it. So stay tuned for additional information in terms of the online web form. Thank you, Lak. Thank you. So without further ado, I want to introduce Saeed Bakshi, Application Development Support. Good morning, everyone. How we are doing so far? It's a great information we got it from Locke and Call. Thank you both. Um, Call and Locke talk about two values, integrity and commitment. I'm going to talk about innovations. We are all empowered to seek uh, creative ideas, be innovative, but of course, with uh, taking intelligent risk, calculated risk. Innovation is not supposed to be small, can be large. Innovation can be IT, non-IT, and uh, we're taking a risk. And uh, lately, as you all know, uh, IT ran a couple of campaign to capture the innovative ideas. The first one was is our IT logo. You see all that, right? And uh, one of your uh, colleagues came up with a great idea, an innovative way of, from District 2. And that's now we have as an IT logo. The second innovative idea came up again from uh, people like your staff about the collab uh, onboarding process and also communications. When we get a new employee, how we can onboard them quickly and faster so they can come up faster to, to, the, uh, to the board and to the responsibility. With that, I'm going to give you a little bit uh, update on bimodal. As you know, and Carl talk about that, uh, we talk about the bimodal, uh, and uh, it's another innovative of developing application, a fast track using agile methodology. And I want to hear thank you to the ADSD uh, bimodal team. They came a long way, and uh, but they be able to deliver two products. One of them is local admin rights pilot, which is called, talked about that. It's right now, it's deployed to IT, as George always telling us to zip the champagne ourselves first. That's what we are doing that. And we are so excited, uh, IT procurements, Locke talked about the pr process and procedures. The so good news is we'll be able to automate it and be as applications. It's very exciting. It's going to come up very soon, and uh, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be find it very, very useful. And with that, I'm going to ask Mike from IMD to come and talk about a lot of good stuff. <laughs> Thank you. New to Caltrans, I'm your division chief in the infrastructure management division, and I also serve as the chief technology officer. So today I'm going to talk about several things. Uh, one is about teamwork, one of our core values. Uh, teamwork is to me is very simple. It's, uh, it's a group of people getting together, defining common goals, and try to achieve common outcomes. Uh, for us, uh, we live that every day, right? For IMD. Uh, we open uh, on a monthly pay, uh, um, uh, basis anywhere from 15 to 20,000 heat tickets to serve our customers. And, and the, the heat ticket is just only a, a tracking mechanism where we hand off to different service providers within our division and beyond our divisions to make sure that those service requests or incidents are uh, attended timely and resolve timely so that uh, we can support our customers. Uh, but beyond you know, IMD, uh, we work with security to help Carl and his division roll out security tools to protect uh, the integrity of our systems uh, and safeguard our information for the department. We work with Lux Sue and her division to buy goods and services. So thank you, Lux, and your team for doing a fine job in assisting us uh, on that front. And we'll work with Sayeed Bakshi and his division to stand up the infrastructure and to make sure that it's sustainable so that his applications 
that he administers, design and support, support the mission, the business programs, um, you know, for Caltrans. But when you look beyond IT, teamwork is what we're all about. We're here to support the mission of the transportation business. We support the programs. So we are just one component of a larger family of Caltrans whereby we're here to do a lot of teamwork to support those business operations to achieve the common mission that we have. So that's what teamwork is all about to me. Uh, but I'm here today to share with you uh, some updates on three other areas. You know, um, Carl and, and Saeed, uh, thank you for giving me callus, okay, for clicking on my mouse and approving all of these requests for local admin rights. But I want to spend um, just a brief moment to give some clarification. Uh, the scope of what that we're talking about here is really local admin rights to the desktops and laptops. We're not getting giving local admin rights to the servers, administrators. Okay, that's uh, that's out of scope, and we'll deal with um, um, uh, privilege access management uh, as a solution if we go forward to deal with server um, admin rights later. But for now, we're focusing on desktop and laptops only. So for those of you, uh, I know IMD is big, 410 positions, and there are many of you that are out on the forefront dealing with desktop support, and yes, I do receive a lot of these requests, and I've been clicking and approving and reviewing all of these requests to make sure that you guys have the right permission to do your job, and I do get callous, or I feel that way in doing so. So just a, a point of clarification. But I want to spend um, uh, a, a brief moment to give you an update on the CWAA, which stands for Caltrans Web Accessibility for All. I have the privilege to be uh, to have been co-leading this project with uh, SAE in making sure that our website uh, is going to be compliant with uh, WCAG 2.1 AA standards. In short, it's it's about ADA accessibility, making sure that those that um, have um, uh, the need for assistive uh, technology, um, our documents uh, will be accessible to them so that they can listen to um, the information that we have published on the web. We are making great progress on that front. It's, it's about four things um, that we are tracking very closely on this project. It's about document remediation. We got about a half a million pages that we're tracking. We're about 33% complete. We're scheduled, uh, scheduled for June 15 to complete 100%. We have a very, very rigorous quality assurance, quality control program to make sure that everything that we receive back achieve the standards that we are set out to do. Um, the second thing that we're doing is application remediation. We got 58 applications that we're tracking and remediating. We're doing really well uh, on those. There are about seven applications that may not meet the deadline, but we have a, um, a roadmap to achieve those uh, remediation uh, within uh, six months or so. And then the website, the beautiful new website that we have uh, designed, it is in staging right now. If you haven't seen it, uh, webmasters, if you are out there, uh, please take the time right now to review the content that we're migrating from the old to the new. So make sure that it's intact, the integrity is there, the information is accurate and complete. And then uh, last but not least, uh, it's all about moving and migrating data from the old site uh, to the new site. And we're hoping to launch uh, a couple of days early. It's supposed to be July 1st, but we're, uh, we're targeting June 28th. Uh, the morning, a Friday morning, so that we can launch it. We got all the experts in the office, and if there's anything, any anomalies that may turn up, we have all the expertise there to roll up their sleeves and basically tackle the issues. Uh, so that's what we are with the CAWU update. Uh, and lastly, I want to talk about the, um, the division's realignment. First, uh, it's about establishing a management, a new management layer that Caltrans never had. Um, we have been successfully been able to establish what I call a, um, a senior 
civil service management layer at the level of the IT information technology manager too. Never had it before. Other organizations like CalPERS, FTB, DMV, and so on, they have a lot of those, you know, anywhere between six um, to eight. Um, at at uh, CDT, they have more than 40. We don't have any. So I want to take uh, this moment to thank George for his um, uh, leadership and being a champion for us to push it through. We recently got the approval for finance, so thank you, George. Um, for for um, leading that, that that fight and and allowing us to have that leadership level that we have now how is that going to impact us it's going to be impacting us in a very positive way right um, we are now going to be able to um, uh, increase the level of our rank and file to at a higher level where we can um, have more complex functions performed by uh, individuals that we currently don't have. For instance, districts um, never had like specialist uh, 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 S two uh, uh, or triple S one uh, in the past. But now with um, this level of management, we'll be able to create some headroom for us to lift all of those levels up so that we can um, uh, deal with several uh, challenges like compaction issues and so on. Um, if I remember correctly, up until uh, now, we have begun this uh, upgrade effort. I uh, believe that we have had uh, a total of 13 packages approved and, and executed. Um, seven of these are rank and file, and six of them are for supervisors, um, upgrading them from uh, supervisor one level to two. Okay? Um, so, we're not done yet, you know. Uh, the, uh, the deadline for filing for the ITM2s, um, uh, we just basically passed that about a week or two weeks ago, hoping to bring those people on board so that we can basically look at uh, across all the districts and uh, deal with all the upgrades, you know, uh, for the rest of the division. So that's all I have for this morning. Great. George. I appreciate it. You might as well stay up here. I got a feeling we're going to have some questions. All right. Okay. Well, you know, I want to take some questions locally first from uh, D6 IT. Are there any questions? And Dan, I don't know if we need to hand the mic around. Let's see. You guys normally aren't shy. All right. Omar. 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 All right. Wow. Do you have a whole book of questions there? Is that not? <laughs> now, before you ask this question, you know, George always threw me the hard questions of the past. Can I flip that around today? George takes all the hard questions today. Yeah, I will take them. I will delegate them right back down, Mike. So thank you very much. <laughs> True leadership in action, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, good morning, and thank you very much for coming, Mr. Akiyama and Mr. Nguyen. Pleasure wow. to have you both. Nicely done on the pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> I do my best, sir. Um, my question is basically about Adobe Experience Manager. We heard that this is being looked at as the next replacement for Lifecycle, oh. and we're curious about when we might expect to hear more about that and about when we would see it and if we'd even see it here in the district during the development process. Well, that's an yeah. excellent question, but this one time I'm going to duck because it's not <laughs> in my area of responsibility. It's Saeed, so I'll turn it over to Saeed. So great, great question. <laughs> that question is around AEM being a replacement for life cycle, right, and then when you might see that in the district. I would also ask Saeed, because we're looking at SimpliGov and other low-code, no-code technologies, so can you talk about sure. AM and also can you talk about, you know, simply Gov or Salesforce? Absolutely. Great question. Thank you very much. Uh, AEM, as you said, yeah, is going to replace the life cycle. Life cycle is going to be expired and no more support on that. And AEM is going to still is going to have their forms and all that. And we do have uh, licenses on that. But one thing, uh, as George mentioned it, we're approaching the other no code, no development, right? To go to that direction, we don't want to go to start from the scratch and writing codes. So there's a technology that we mentioned about here about the local admin right, IT procurement, all developed in simply golf, which is no code. Quickly, we can develop the applications. We're also looking at the other technology, like a Salesforce, like a, a Dynamics. Salesforce came up very 
uh, interesting and uh, has a lot of capability that we can utilize that and quickly deliver solution to our business people. And AM is another solution, but uh, still there's a lot of forms, there's a lot of coding in it, and we are cautions a lot, all of you that whenever you want to work on developer solution, look at the business, what exactly you're developing and what's your criteria. Not just any technology for everything. I mean, that would be what I would say that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Oh. So, so I left a little early yesterday, yeah. but somebody did mention that Mike mentioned something about a centralized uh, service desk. So okay. we're wondering if that's still on the table and if yeah. how that would affect each district in All terms right. of if it's still on the table. Thank you for the question and uh, just a little context. You know, oftentimes when we come out to the districts, we have uh, meetings with all the local IT staff. So when we said you had to leave a little early, we took the meeting yesterday. We actually have a great uh, lunch coming up as well. So that's the reference, because uh, I think, Mike, you had some discussion with the local IT staff around yeah. Central Health Excellent desk. question. So yesterday we talked about replacing heat with snow, right? So heat is our current ticketing system, and snow stands for service now, right? <laughs> And um, we are evaluating the offers right now since we have the RFO out there, request for offers for several weeks. So we're going to be making the procurement. So your question is, are we going to have a centralized uh, service desk? The answer is yes and no, right? We're buying the system. We're buying the subscription for the service. So in terms of how we um, manage the data, Right, the ticketing system, whether it's an incident, a request, what have you, it's going to be a centralized system. But how you guys are operating today is a very distributed environment. Right, you use the same system, but you may have a service desk function within the district. That's not going to change unless we get together and we say we in the district want to basically change how we operate from a distributed manner, and let's centralize this, you know, for these reasons. Then we'll get together and say, oh, really? Let's look at, you know, total cost of ownership, operational efficiency, does that work? And then if it does, then we will consider that change. But right now, that function in that distributed environment will not change. I hope I answered your question. Yes, you All right? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any other questions from D6? Oh, go for it. I love it. <laughs> one quick one, sir. All right. And this might be for Ms. Sue. Um, is ServiceNow going to incorporate any part of the procurement process so that assets will start there earlier before they reach? Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that, Mr. Nguyen. That's a good question because this is really a partnership. My understanding of the ServiceNow implementation, I'll let um, Mike uh, further elaborate. You know, there's different modules within ServiceNow. Right now, procurement is not on the first phase, right? But asset management is considered. So I'll let you elaborate on that detail in terms of asset management. She's so fine. Carry on. <laughs> right? Uh, luck is absolutely correct. Um, the scope of our ServiceNow implementation, uh, from my memory, is going to be asset management, incident management, change management, release management, um, the service desk, but it doesn't include within the scope procurement. Okay, uh, we may consider that in the future, uh, but right now, in terms of asset management, it's going to do auto discovery. It's going to work in concert with SCCM to normalize our assets. The days of you guys doing manual asset management, collecting things manually, recording them on a spreadsheet, or putting them into ITAM. Um, you know, we're going to basically get to an end very soon once we have the asset management up and running. Okay? All right. I got you. I love how Luck did that. I think that's CIO in training, right? You tee it up, and then boom, you go to Mike. <laughs> Any other uh, questions from D6? 
All right, Ron, do we have a couple more? We do. We got one online here. George, um, George, you mentioned we have a new secretary, an undersecretary oh. of transportation. Can yep. you tell us a little bit more about them? Yeah, thanks, Ron. I'm sorry. I should have elaborated on that earlier. So certainly the new secretary of transportation, uh, da David Kim. I'm going to be confused because there's a Daniel Kim who runs DGS. So now the Daniel Kim at DGS, David Kim at CalSTA. Uh, really looking forward to it. I've heard a lot of great things about him. He's a transportation guy. Uh, transportation at the Fed level at FHWA, transportation at the corporate level. My understanding, he's coming to us from uh, Hyundai, a right, big manufacturer where he did, uh, I think, some work on uh, lobbying or governmental relations. And so he's been around the block. Also, a Californian, because my understanding, uh, he grew up in Davis. So a NorCal guy, understands the California landscape, understands the federal landscape, understands also the um, you know, private sector landscape, so I think that's great. Uh, we also have a new undersecretary, and I, I may be mispronouncing her name, but Elisa Kenovi, uh, not Obi-Wan, uh, but Elisa. And, uh, so she also has a very strong transportation background, worked at the Fed level. She was the CFO at the Federal Highway uh, Administration, FHWA. Uh, also, strong public policy background, so big in the legislature and so forth. So I'm really happy to see, you know, very strong uh, transportation folks in charge of CalSTA. You know, we've had a rich history with Brian Kelly, Brian Annis, you know, and Christine Inouye and, and the leaders before them. Nice to see CalSTA's continuing that tradition of strong uh, policy, strong background in transportation. Thank you, Ron. Great. Thank you, George. If we have time for one more, I think this one's for uh, Mike and Saeed, possibly. Oh, a different one. We, Carl's off the hook today? <laughs> All Carl's right. off the hook today. All right, Mike, come on. Come on up. Don't be shy. Mike and Saeed. Mike and Saeed. Here we go. So this is a timely question for you guys. Um, for CWAA, what should webmasters be doing at this moment? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, webmasters, you have a very important uh, duty right now. The staging website uh, has been designed. It's in staging. We got a lot of information um, prepared for that environment. Uh, we are looking to you to start reviewing all the pages to ensure that the information for the programs um, uh, is there. It's accurate. It's complete. It is relevant. And anything that is irrelevant, it is dated. Uh, we need to look to you to basically identify those so that we can remove those or update you know, the information accordingly. Um, also, look for opportunities to attend training. Uh, we are changing how we're going to conduct business in the department. We have a brand new child that we just you know, are about to basically bring into this world, and we want to make sure that this website, the face of Caltrans, will be great, it will be neat, it will be concise, it will be consistent, right, it will be accurate, right, it's, it's, it's our face, how we communicate with the, with the public. So we, wanna, we, we are establishing standards and practices, right, and we want you to be trained in those. One of the things that I'm introducing so that we can enforce that and sustain the website, you know, um, uh, in terms of its integrity going forward is that each of you who will be given um, access right to author and publish these uh, web pages. Um, you need to be trained. You need to sign an attestation stating that you shall support and defend these standards so that we can sustain the website. And if you fail to do so, uh, we're going to revoke your rights. Don't want to do that. We want to promote collaboration teamwork. Right, so uh, we need you to go go and take these training courses internally, um, being offered by uh, our great Caltrans employees, so that you can help us basically communicate to the public. Okay, anything else you want to add? Yeah, as Mike said, that we don't want to go back to the to the today with what we are today. Three million documents unorganized. It's public doesn't know what it is. So the new home is for public. Usage only. So we are so serious to make sure that we keep the, our standards in place. That's the important one. We've done a lot of um, uh, research uh, using Google Analytics to crawl 
um, um, the database to determine uh, top hits on our current website in terms of information that the public and our partners are after. And what we have done is take all of the information that have the top hits, we have moved them to strategic locations on the website, such as front and center. Things like um, uh, uh, the traveler, you know, public, uh, popular travel links. People want to look at live traffic cameras. People want to look at highway conditions, right? Pe people want to look at uh, quick map. So we don't want them to click, 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 20 clicks before they get to where the public wants to go. We put it right front and center on the landing page, right? So we want to basically keep that, you know, front and center and pristine. So we don't want to introduce things that will clutter that up. And we don't want to move those things, you know, back down six levels or 12 levels deep either. So those are the standards that I'm talking about so that we'll need your help to so really sustain that. Okay? Okay. A lot more questions, but we'll okay. make sure to answer those uh, offline and get back to you on those. All right, thanks, Ron. I appreciate that. And I appreciate everybody asking questions, and I, you know, whether you're in person or via the Ask George email. But, you know, the last question I have is, where are we going next? Any, any ideas on where this building might be? It looks pretty modern. District 7. Wow. You've got uh, the questions and the answers. <laughs> that, that's, that, that's fantastic. <laughs> you come from, do you come from this area? Do you? No, it's just, uh, I would say it's the crown jewel right now of oh. the Caltrans headquarters. Wow, so very nicely done, nicely done. I appreciate that. Yeah, so D7 will hit for our next uh, quarterly IT all staff. Uh, but again, I want to thank you all for tuning in. I want to thank you for uh, attending the IT all staff meeting. Hopefully you came away with a little more uh, information today, and then hopefully you are a little entertained as well. And uh, we'll see you on the next show.